Well guys, it looks like the stock market is throwing yet another temper tantrum after various Fed officials circled back to the idea of higher interest rates. And this time, it's not just the S&P 500 that's being affected by this hawkish talk. The growth stock market, including stocks like Plug Power, Nikola Motors, and Coinbase specifically has been getting destroyed as investors try to price in a potential recession and lower economic spending. So where exactly is the light at the end of the tunnel for us retail investors this year? And could we seriously be at the cusp of one of the worst earnings seasons since the start of the pandemic? Let's address all of that and more in this video. But before we get into it guys, make sure to drop me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. So let's start off by understanding the state of the market right now. As you guys can see, my personal portfolio has actually been doing quite poor over the past few weeks specifically because April was the month that we were expected to get a massive move in interest rates. And no, that's not from the Federal Reserve. That's from the 10 year bond, which is already going up very significantly over the past couple of weeks. As you can see throughout 2020, the 10 year treasury bond was actually relatively low and that allowed a lot of growth stocks to perform relatively well because obviously in a low interest rate environment, it's easier for companies to raise money and the discounted cash flow valuation metric that many hedge funds use to value stocks is often much better for growth. But ever since the start of 2021, this yield has been going up substantially, which means that investors have been selling bonds. And when investors sell bonds, it typically means that there's going to be an economic tightening. And we all know in 2021 is when the growth stock crash really started. And although through the middle of 2021, we saw some sort of relaxation at the very start of 2022, we saw yet another crash in technology and energy stocks as the yield went from around 1.8 all the way up to around three. But as we all know, it's not always just one thing that is spooking the market. The second thing that's really scared a lot of investors out of growth stocks over the past few days is the fact that Chair Powell came out and said that he is willing to raise interest rates more aggressively to tame inflation. Specifically, he said that a 50 basis point hike is going to be in the cards for early May, which is obviously when the next FOMC meeting is going to happen. The last FOMC meeting we had was in the middle of March. And if you guys remember after that specific meeting, which is when interest rates were raised to around 25 basis points, we saw a massive rally in growth stocks, especially on the S&P 500, which hit a high of almost 462 bucks. Now, why exactly is this potentially a good thing for the upcoming May meeting? Well, as we all know, the market sold off really aggressively in anticipation of that 25 basis point hike in March. And so if now the market is selling off yet again in anticipation of a 50 basis point hike next month, then chances are we might see a relaxation in the market after the FOMC meeting. And the good thing is that the consumer demand for goods has actually been falling a little bit over the past few months as prices have obviously gone up substantially. And since goods are the main reason why we have such massive supply chain problems, which in turn lead to inflation, that is definitely a very good sign of a potential inflection coming. But if we now move on over to the third big reason why stocks have been performing very poorly recently, it's obviously because of the fact that a company like Netflix dropped around 35% in after hours after they reported a 200,000 subscriber loss. But to be honest, for me, this Netflix drama is something more of a fear mongering event than something very fundamental. And the reason for that is because we all know that Netflix was not only an overvalued stock from a PE and price of sales metric, but this is also a stay at home play. If you look at any stay at home stock like Zoom or Roku, these stocks have been getting destroyed since 2020. So it was about time that a stock like Netflix also came back down, which is a company that does not even have that big of an economic moat. But the best part is that this massive sell off in large caps has actually made itself over to some of the higher quality names like Facebook and even Alibaba. Facebook is trading at a price of fee crash flow of around $13 and a forward PE of only around 13. Whereas even after their massive drop, Netflix is trading at a forward PE of around 15 and they have zero free cash flow. And since obviously there was a lot of money invested in these high flying names, there is now a lot of cash on the sidelines that investors could put back into small cap growth stocks. As you can see, bullish retail investor sentiment is at its all time low for the past 10 years. To put this into perspective, this is a chart for the sentiment index over the past five years. And as you can see, even during the COVID 2020 crash, we only had a bullish sentiment of around 30. 
And now we're reaching all the way to around that 15% level, which is extremely low and a great buy signal. And if you zoom out to the 10 year, we have never been this low in this index. And the last time we were was back in the 08 recession, which is obviously when we had an actual financial collapse. And if we pair that with the fact that the S&P 500 PE ratio is starting to come down very nicely to similar levels that we saw in 2017 and 2019, it's very obvious to see why we're seeing some sort of pain in the short term market. Because as you can see, small caps and mid caps are already trading very cheap. But now that these large caps are also starting to correct like Netflix, PayPal and Facebook, we're starting to see a more normal market, very opposite of what we saw at the end of 2020 and the start of 2021. And that is definitely a good thing because long term investors are going to get better buying opportunities. But obviously you want to look at both sides of the coin. And one of the recent things that I've personally seen that's a little bit bearish was from the Corsair Gaming's earnings report. And as you can see, as of today, the stock is down around 10%, primarily because they released a very poor earnings result for their first quarter. But the important part here is what the CEO of Corsair actually commented on, which is where he said that the primary reason why their revenue has gone down is because they're actually seeing a reduction in demand in Europe. Now, it's hard to know if this is primarily because of the Russian conflict and higher inflation in the country, but this could definitely add as a bigger problem for some of the goods based companies in the US. So if you have any companies in your portfolio that are directly selling products to consumers in Europe, then you want to keep an eye out because their next few quarters could be a lot more choppy. But regardless, if we now move on over to addressing some of the audience questions that I asked yesterday, the first one comes from Peen Machine, who's asking what exactly is PPI and why is it the most concerning thing for the stock market right now? Well, the PPI is essentially the producer price index, and it's a little bit different from the CPI, which is what we tend to measure for inflation, in that it primarily includes the costs that are paid for by the manufacturers of goods and services. And as you can see, unlike the CPI, the PPI has a very long term trajectory to the upside because this thing is mostly run by long run economic growth. Whereas the CPI is much more driven by the short term business cycle, which is affected highly by the cost of goods. But the key takeaway here is that the PPI is highly affected by interest rates. And like I showed you, the 10 year yield has been going up aggressively over the past few months. And that's probably the big reason why this index has also been going up. And sometime sooner rather than later, we are going to see an inflection point in that yield because inflation could start coming down at the end of this year. Because if manufacturers start paying cheaper prices, consumers are also going to follow. The next question comes here from Steve K, who's asking what exactly do interest rates do to inflation and the economy? And the simple answer to this question is that in the long term, interest rates have no effect on the economy. In the long term, economic growth and the standard of living in this country is driven primarily by technological change and labor productivity. It's basic macroeconomics. But obviously, in the short term, interest rates are used to fight inflation. And that is part of the dual mandate that the Federal Reserve has, which is obviously they want to have price stability, which means keeping inflation at a decent level and then having economic growth and high employment. And right now, the high employment is very high but price stability is very low. So the Fed is going to raise interest rates to balance that out a little bit more. And the last question up here comes from Andrew Freeman, who's asking what exactly is the forecast on inflation, recession, and how can we position our portfolios for those? Well, the simple answer to this question is to approach with a barbell approach. For those that don't know, barbell basically means you have value and you have growth both in your portfolio at an equal weight. Value is obviously something that does very well during a recessionary period because there's a lot of cash flow that investors can rely on. Whereas growth tends to do very well in the long term when there's economic growth in the underlying economy. And that's the main reason why i am personally been buying growth stocks aggressively over the past year, because the only reason the stocks have been selling off is because of something very short term, which is obviously interest rates. But the underlying labor market is at its record high and innovation is also being done at a record pace within the US. And all that is going to end up benefiting some of the small cap growth stocks that are making the changes happen. And yes, although there's a chance of a recession happening on paper at the end of this year and at the start of next year, it might not have as big of a lasting impact because obviously the job market is so strong. And so chances are we might just see like a short term recession like we saw in March of 2020, which lasted for a very short amount of time. 
And the good thing is that it's going to actually create a good buying opportunity for some of the more value based consumer cyclical and defensive stocks. And yes, even though growth stocks like in my own portfolio might struggle a little bit, I'm making sure that my portfolio has exposure to B2B businesses instead of B2C, which means the companies that I'm investing in are selling to other businesses instead of consumers, because we all know that consumers are the ones that are immediately affected by any interest rate hike and a recession. But anyways, guys, make sure to drop me a thumbs up if you found some value from this video. Let me know down in the comment section below your guys' thoughts on some of the growth stock sell-offs recently and the possibilities of a recession. But anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.